Mark Raffoff, this has been a tough year already. We are losing uh, far too many of the heroes and giants of the IMSA GTP, GTO, GT era. You were there for all of it, a big part of it. We just lost Bruce Levin 30 years ago, this event. His team, Bayside Racing, won. So sad that we lost Bruce uh, during a week where we should be celebrating their achievements. Knowing that a lot of what Bruce achieved happened well before the internet, uh, he might not be as known of a person as he should. So I thought I'd just ask you, someone who knew him, worked with him as an IMSA official, tell us about the garbage man. What was he like? What did he bring? Well, that era created a lot of guys that came racing who were certainly characters, and Bruce was definitely one of them. Bruce went racing Bruce's way. Um, he always put forth the most professional-looking team. He always went for the best drivers because he realized right away for his team to succeed, even though he personally was very competent, won the 12 hours of Sebring with uh, Al Holbert and Hurley Haywood in a 935. But um, when he wanted to drive, he always had enough rolling stock where he could. But he brought in uh, the Klaus Ludwigs, the Bobby Rahals, the Jochen Masses, the Bob Wallachs, Holbert, Haywood. Um, a lot of the greats of that era that still have to go down in history is the best sports car drivers and possibly era ever. And uh, what, what I remember most about Bruce was he wasn't uh, challenging, but if he had something to say, you certainly listened. Very astute businessman, um, a great guy uh, socially. I mean, he was fun to be around. Um, he stuck to his guns about his opinions and often did things in ways that uh, made us as officials cringe, but uh, in those days, people, a lot of people did that, and he certainly has the rank of as being one of the most successful private guys. Um, I think 87, you mentioned the race here in 87, was the begin, beginning of a tear where I think they run one six, Moss and Ray Hall doing the rest of them, and they only ran, yeah, maybe 60% of the schedule and almost won the championship over Holbert because pretty much when they showed up, Bayside was a team you had to uh, think right away would be in victory lane that that weekend. So when they came to race, they were always at the front. They were never back markers. Brought great people. Walter Gerber was his crew chief. Uh, running a team out of uh, Seattle was kind of a, a novelty in those days. But uh, they bought a customer car and they ran a customer car as well as anybody ever ran a 962. Because you only got to do is look at the results. And I want to add, you know, he started in IMSA. I think he started with 924 turbos in GTO or GTU, whatever they were at the time. Gravitated to 935, his win at Sebring was in an ex-Peter Gregg car. Um, and then when the 962 came along, I think he might have been the very first customer and had car number one. Um, and that's the car that Holbert actually ran at Riverside um, because his wasn't ready yet. Um, but, you know, Bruce was just a wonderful guy. He was a great competitor, um, a great addition to the paddock. He was there for a long time. He went on and did some IndyCar racing as well. Uh, but, he, you know, he just, uh, that era produced uh, very interesting characters who were, were a lot of fun to be around, but also took their racing very, very seriously. And I'll, I'll say again, as a driver, he was a very competent guy for basically being a guy that came up through um, amateur racing in the SCCA and uh, drove a lot of different kind of cars and always drove them well. And said it's a sad year when we lost both him and Preston Hen, who were two of the biggest characters in the Camel GT paddock in those days. Well, we still have one of the characters here. So let's close on this, and, and I know you loved it. We speak about this uh, often. One of the great things about Bruce, about the Bayside team, about buying a turnkey Porsche 962, for example, we're trying to recreate that model now in IMSA with the customer P2s where a good amateur uh, with a pro alongside, they can come out here and really mess with the factories Bruce and Bayside Racing, that was their model. Bruce wasn't a pro, but he sure as heck hired some great drivers and uh, sent some folks home very upset that they didn't win. Just tell me about that turnkey era that Bruce and his team really epitomized. Well, I think you have to uh, give a lot of tribute to, to Porsche for producing that car, which uh, those of you might know came from a bit of a struggle about the previous model in IMSA, the 956, which we didn't allow. But uh, giving the, the, the customer or the, the owner like Bruce Levin or Bob Aiken or Preston Hen 
or uh, any one of those guys, Jim Busby, who was also an extremely good driver, but those guys could drive, and they gave them a car that they could drive. Moretti drove them for years as Mo in Momo colors. So you, you sit back and you have to give credit to the engineering and the expertise put into that car that not only was it incredibly fast, um, you mentioned the 87 race here was on the old circuit here, which was... Um, rather manly compared to the current yes, layout absolutely. <laughs> and when you watch those guys hustle those cars around this racetrack particularly third through turn two and up the hill you know you, you just immediately saw how great the car was that enabled um you know competent but not professional guys to really go fast and do a good job for their team and then when you saw those cars in the hands of people like ludwig and moss and ray hall you just realized how spectacular a car that was but to bruce's credit bayside racing was small it was efficient uh, it was always impeccably and beautifully prepared the cars were always spectacular always had great paint jobs or sponsorship schemes depending on what years they were pinstripes we pinstripes but you know he did stripes. he did the budweiser but he did yep. the pinstripes on the budweiser cars as well and um you know he just did a, a first class professional job the team looked good worked well wasn't very big uh, very dedicated people who did a good job obviously because they got the results and that was back in the days when you know, you put 31 gallons of gas, four tires, and a driver change in about 18 seconds. So, you know, the pit work, the crew work, uh, executing the race was a different deal than it is today because of the regulations. But um, Bayside was number one anytime they showed up. You had to consider them a winning deal. And I think when you look again back to the car and the number of people who had them, they were racing against uh, GM and Ford and Jaguar and Toyota and Nissan. I mean, factory efforts with two cars, and they were beating them. And uh, that says a lot for both the quality of the car and the teams that individuals like Bruce put together to, to run the cars. Raising a few too many glass, glasses of champagne to uh, toast those who helped make uh, the IMSA GTP era is special as it is, but thanks again for helping us remember Bruce.